Yeah, yeah, what's going on, you guys? Your boy Devon Terrell in raw form, and welcome to another Help Me Devon Raw tutorial. And today, in this Help Me Devon Raw tutorial, I'll be mastering a record in under a minute using one preset. So let's start the timer. Let's get right to it. Okay, so I'll bypass this back and forth and let you get an idea of what just happened. Listen to this record closely. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very proud to announce the HMD Studio Rack Master Preset, now available at helpmedevon.info in the link in the description. We worked so hard on creating a preset that basically embodies all of the mastering tips, tricks, techniques, and kind of things that I usually do. And I finally decided to put it into one place that I can control, that I can basically use uh, to master my records from here on out, as far as incorporating some really dope techniques that I've been showing you guys throughout the channel. And I'm gonna show you exactly how, how to use these buttons, even if you, are not trying to use every single last one of them, some of these buttons can be really, really clutch uh, when it comes to your masters. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you guys to comment, like, and subscribe to keep this channel going. And also make sure you visit helpmedevon.info to get presets like this, as well as other vocal chains and things like that we have uh, for Cubase as well now. And uh, also remember to uh, join in on our HMD mix contest as well that ends January 18th, 2021. So if you're listening to this or seeing this after January 18th, 2021, one. I'm sorry, it's all over. Now, all of that is in the description. Let's get back to this. Now, in this plugin, I've created a bunch of different techniques that I like to use for my masters, whether that's saturation, um, uh, limiting, of course, uh, dynamic processing in a sense of adding um, uh, kind of like this uh, feeling of life and, and things like that back into your mixes and your masters. Some really, really important tricks that I always use in my masters, I finally incorporate it into one preset that you can get. So check this out. First things first is, let's take all this stuff and bring it way back down, way, way, way back down. So let's start with this knob right here that I have that says vocals. Now, what this vocal knob basically is created for is, it's basically to make your vocals pop a little bit more in the master. And it's done in a, such a subtle way that that's exactly how I like to master. When it comes to mastering, I don't like to do these huge, huge moves. I like to do very subtle things that add up to a bigger picture. Remember, when you're doing mastering, it shouldn't be such huge drastic uh, changes to the entire mix as the artist or whoever has sent it to you. So all of these knobs are very subtle in what they do, but extremely powerful at the same time. Okay, so take a look at this vocals knob. Let's see what it does as I crank it up. Okay, now I'll bypass this back and forth. Listen to what it did. So I put it in a way that what it's boosting in the vocal or what it's giving to the vocal is very unique frequencies that are found that I like uh, to boost when it comes to my vocal range. I'm talking about places like the 800, the 1.6, very unique spots to boost in the vocal where it doesn't feel like it just overpowers the mix, but also gives the mix a little bit more of an oomph when it comes to the vocal. So this vocal button in itself is just super dope. You can see I cranked it all the way to the to the uh, to its farthest side, and it didn't feel like it 
went crazy or just did anything wild. And that's the beauty of this entire thing. It's kind of like a, 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 a fail safe for you not to do too much. Okay. Next button I'm going to go over to is this like button. This is probably my favorite button. And the reason why it's my favorite button is because it does exactly what it says. Gives a life to the mix. Now, it's pretty much kind of like the thing that you, or the concept of, that you may her, have heard of with dynamic EQ or basically like upward compression. Long story short, I'm using some type of expander type of feel that is in unique frequency ranges to make the music feel a little bit more lively. Because a lot of times when we compress and EQ and do all these things to our mixes, when it comes to our masters, usually when we put a limiter and everything else on it, it feels kind of like it lacks dynamics. There's really no movement as far as the mix. So with this light button, we've created very specific frequency ranges that expands the sound in a very subtle way that makes it feel like it's more alive. You'll notice the hi-hats get a, little, a lot more fun. The bottom end, it feels like it's rumbling off the speakers and the vocals just feel like it has more weight. It's a really, really dope button. Check this out. Okay, now let's bypass this back and forth. Listen to what it did. So it just adds a little bit more life to the mix. You can hear those hi-hats get a little bit more rumbling, more uh, like they're dancing. The bottom end kind of is rumbling a little bit more and the, the mid-range just feels like it just has a little bit more weight. It's really, really powerful and you don't even have to use it, like I said, all the way crank to the right. You can do it in a subtle way just to add some dynamics back into your entire uh, master so that it feels like it moves a little bit more. Okay. Moving right along, we have the saturate knob. And what the saturate knob is, is basically an emulation of analog saturation. What you'll notice in this is you'll feel like the entire mix uh, for the master just gets a little bit more crisp. Everything just feels a little bit better. It just adds harmonics to your entire mix. And it's really, really nice sounding depending on if your sound source. So check this out. And this I like to use in moderation. So it feels a little bit more crisp. It feels a little bit more uh, intelligent and more like quality to me. So let me bypass this back and forth. Listen to what it did. Without first. So it sounds a lot more fun. It sounds like it just has a little bit more intelligence. It feels like the mix gets crispier, but without causing so much of that stuff to basically come into your signal. Okay. Next knob I'm gonna move over to is the whiff knob. Now this whiff knob is very, very subtle. And I say it's very subtle in a sense of, uh, when it comes to mastering, I don't like to put so much of, uh, or play with the stereo field so much because that can cause phasing issues and things of that nature. So always check your phase whenever you use anything that deals with whiff. But this whiff knob is very subtle in what it does, but it adds just a little bit of a whiff to your mix. I'll skip this for now, just because I just wanna go into more stuff, but whiff, pretty self-explanatory, but it's extremely powerful if you are looking for more whiff out of your master. This thing works and it's very subtle. Okay, let's move on over to this glue knob and then I'll go to sub. So long story short, what this glue knob is, it's a form of mastering compression that I've created within the plugin. Long story short, I created an algorithm where you are not bothering the low end information of your mix and more or less you're bothering everything from about 125 hertz and above. And what that does is it helps to glue that top end information a little bit when you and then brings it up so that it kind of matches and feels more level with the low end stuff. So the a compressor is really not taking or paying attention too much to your low end, which is unbothered, which makes for a nice low end. And it's really just making sure up here is tight. That's why I call it glue, because it's gluing this top information together and bringing it up to come closer to that low end. Check out this knob. This is compression. This is some mastering compression. Come 
run up. It's my party, go turn up. Okay, so peep this. I want you to understand and want you to listen to the glue, how this thing kind of just feels a little bit more close together, kind of like it just added glue without first. So you see, within that button, it feels like it just got closer together. It feels like the vocals just stood out a little bit more, but it still feels like the mix just kind of came together. So this one knob in itself just helps so much if you're just looking to use it for that to kind of glue everything together to feel more tighter and more cohesive together. Okay, next thing I'll move on over to is this sub knob. And this sub knob is is crazy. Um, I'll let you get an idea. Let me find this one spot where there is an 808 so I can let you hear what the sub knob really does. Okay, so check this out. I'm gonna crank this sub knob and please listen to this on headphones or on a monitors or something that can reproduce low end really well. Listen to what the sub knob does. Let's put it right here. Let's take this off. Okay, now I'm gonna bypass this back and forth. Check out what this thing did without first. Night and day. If you're listening to this on headphones, your jaw drop. You heard the difference. It makes such a huge difference uh, with adding nice low end without making it feel like it did anything. It didn't feel like it became overbearing in the mix or anything like that. There's a lot of things that it's compensating for and also adding some uh, lower harmonics to the entire mix. It's beautiful. And this thing will make your 808s rumble. Just get it for your 808s if that's the case. Okay. Last but not least, uh, basically is the bass tame knob. And long story short, what the bass tame knob is for, it's just a way to compensate for an overproduction of low end. So if you feel like you have a mix or master that just has a lot of low end, this bass tame knob will tame the bass. It's beautiful in what the way it does it. So say for instance, if you crank that sub knob and you're like, ah, I just wanna take a little bit out, you can use that bass tame knob and it'll do some, some nice, nice compression to that low end, but still sound natural in your mix. And of course the limiter knob is self-explanatory. You want some loudness? crank the limiter knob and you will get your loudness out of the mix or master. So this is basically our one of our new products in the helpmedevon.info store, which is in the link in the description below. I know some of you will even use this for the HMD mixing contest. That is also in the link below. Um, I We really worked really hard on this. We tested it out with a bunch of people and they loved it. And it's a part of my workflow now as well. I really got really hope you guys enjoyed this. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe. Remember, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, you can hit us at helpmedevon at gmail.com. Make sure you follow us at helpmedevon on the Instagram and also join our Discord community with a bunch of aspiring engineers like yourself uh, that are basically communicating, trading information, selling equipment, buying equipment. It's a really dope community and it'll really help if you're just on this journey with us all. So I want to wish everyone that's doing the HMD contest the best of luck. If it is past January 18th, 2021, this makes absolutely no sense. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Remember, it's in the link in the description below, the HMD Studio Rack Master Rack, along with a bunch of our other Master Racks as far as Studio Rack is concerned. Until next time.